What's up, sons? It's Blind Red with another how to. Today, we're going to be talking about how to spin up a Pyrin node and wallet on command line in Linux. This presumes that you already have some basic Linux knowledge and a Linux VM already running, or even, you know, a bare metal Ubuntu install. It will need to be Ubuntu version 22.04 as Pyron needs the latest libraries that are not supported by 20.04 and below. You can patch those libraries into older operating systems, but it can corrupt your kernel. So I do not recommend doing it. We actually talked about this with the Hive OS example on Ablecoin. If you're interested in that, you can check it out. But like I said, in a lot of cases, it will break the kernel. Now, if you are looking at learning more about Linux, I do have my Linux workshop, which you can check out here on the channel with the links down below. I also have written guides for all of this on sonofatech.locals.com, which includes both the written guides for your basic Linux workshops, as well as written guides for the Node software in particular. So. Today, let's go ahead and get into how to build a pirate node on Ubuntu 22.04. So to start things off, you will need to be aware of where to get these files. The source files is going to be on the GitHub, and I'll leave a link for that resource down in the description below. In all cases, if you're ever trying to download something through PuTTY, you can use a wget command, right click and copy the link address for any of these to do that. And I have a a VM running on my local machine here that we'll be utilizing for the tutorial. And I already have a putty session connected. All of this is covered in the Linux workshop. So let's go ahead and get to work. So we've copied that link address and we're gonna type a wget right click to paste the URL for that Linux zip file and press enter and it will basically download the file. You can see here, we get a nice little download bar and it'll tell us when it is complete. We will need to utilize sudo in the next command. So make sure you have your password for a sudo enabled user. And we are going to do sudo unzip. And then we're just going to say go from our home directory to this Linux zip. And then the d d is going to say unpack it to this directory user slash local slash bin. We're going to press oh, Okay, so if you get the unzip command not found and you are on a fresh install of 22.04, before you do that command, you will need to do sudo apt-get install unzip and press enter and then it will download those files. So now that we have unzip installed, we can go back to that previous command. We're gonna do a clear so it clears the screen and I'm gonna actually just tap up to look at my previous commands and go up to the previous unzip command that we did for the Linux zip. And we are going to unpack it to the local bin and press enter. You can see it inflated all of those to that directory. So the next command here is going to be making all of the files in bin that we just extracted executable. To do that, we're going to utilize the chmod command with plus x to make them executable. And within that user local bin directory, we're going to add the asterisk, which says make everything in this directory executable. And we are going to press enter. To confirm this, we can actually do a... Uh, a change directory, go over to the local bin, press enter, and if we run an ls, it will change the color of these to basically green, and that's how you know that they're executable. I'm going to then just do a change directory, change directory cd command and tilde to go back to our home directory and move forward. So we want to make sure that this command is actually working and that since we put it in our bin folder, it comes through as an actual command. So we're gonna run the pyipad dash dash version, which should run essentially that executable from any place in the operating system since we unpacked it there. And you can see that we do get an output of pyipad version 0.13.2. This means that 
these commands are going to work from anywhere within the operating system and we are good to move forward. The next thing that I want to do is make this a service. And what this will do is allow us to essentially run this node on startup as well as monitor the service, etc. To do this, we are going to edit and or create essentially within our system folder, the pyipad.service. So that'll be a nano command. You can use V as well, but V is going to be for a bit more of, let's say, experienced Linux users. And I highly recommend getting familiar with it, but for brevity and ease of use, I'm just going to utilize nano because I think a lot more people understand it and the commands are all kind of listed at the bottom of nano, which makes it easier. So we're going to press enter and it's going to put us into the nano text editor for this service file. And we're going to need to paste in this configuration right here. And we're going to name it the PYI pad service or PyPad service. And then we're going to say, don't start it until the networking service has started. So it does have a dependency. And then you want to change the user to the username of your Ubuntu user. And then you want to set the working directory to, once again, the home file or the of the user that you are currently utilizing to create this. In my case, it's blind run. Just depends on what you named your user in particular. The next thing is that you are going to... Uh, specify how you're starting it. It's important to keep the UTXO index in here if you want to mine to this node at a later date, which we will be doing a guide on as well. We have restart always, so it will always start it if the actual service is not running and it will restart every three seconds if it finds it is not running. So those are what all those mean. We're going to do a control X and type Y to go ahead and save it and then press enter. So now we have our service file created and to activate this, we actually need to reload the daemon. So we'll do that with the sudo system ctl daemon dash reload command and press enter. At this point, we can check the status of that service and it should list us the, the status of that service. As you can see here, it is loaded, but it's inactive. So we need to actually get it active and running. To do this, we are going to enable it, which is going to enable the service to start up at startup and press enter. And that will create a symbiotic link so that it will start that service. And then finally, we need to start the service now to move forward. So it'll be the system CTL start pypad.service and we'll press enter. Once we've done that, we can actually just tab up to our previous status command, run that, and you will see that now we are active and running this node. So we have this all created and the next steps from here is going to be essentially double checking the node and when it is going to be completed syncing. So we can do that with the sudo journal ctl u pipad and then we're going to say look at the last thousand lines and continue to print it so we'll do the dot f there and it will basically give us the output of what that service is running and we will need to essentially wait is for this to sync in most situations and that will basically look like added new block added new block and so on so we'll continue once this has been synced from here and I will get you guys going from there. So you can see it starts printing out as we need it. To quit this, we can just do a control C. We can double check and make sure that the status is still running there as it's just a printout for that one. If you want to continue to watch it at all times, you can create a separate screen with screen dash S and then you could name it something like node and reutilize that command and press enter. And I'll need to enter my password again because we are not elevated here and it will continue to print it out. And then we can press control A D to exit it. And then if we want to reconnect, we can do screen dash R node, re-enter it, monitor our syncing process, and then continue from here later. Once it's synced, we'll talk about creating the wallet.
Alrighty, so now that we are seeing accepted blocks, we know that we are synced. So we're going to do a control A D to leave this screen and we are going to move forward with creating a wallet. Remember, we have made these commands accessible by everyone. So we should just be able to run the Pyron wallet executable and create. At this point, we're going to press enter and enter in a password for our wallet and then it will give us our public key and etc so at this point what i will do is create a little notepad over here with my favorite notepad taker notepad plus plus and i am going to copy this out in putty you just highlight it you don't have to right click or anything and then it will copy it and we can paste it over here and at this point we need to dump our keys so that we can essentially be able to grab our mnemonic phrase it actually gives it to you here in the notice the command but it's pyron wallet dump encrypted data with dashes in between each word and we're going to press enter it will say do you want to print them we'll type y for yes and then type in our password and enter and at this point we will highlight the mnemonic phrase it will copy it out of putty and we will paste it into our file over here and we can essentially save this file to a secure location encrypted usb drive nord locker or something along those lines you could even write it down and put it in a safe or use one of those metal fireproof key stores it's up to you of course the safest is going to be putting it in a safe and just recording it somewhere physically or you know in some cases best ever is going to be memorizing it but I don't expect you guys to memorize every single altcoin that we go through so that would be a little ridiculous I think all right so the next thing we're going to want to do is start the wallet daemon so we're going to do a screen dash capital s and daemon and press enter and at this point, we will run the wallet command once again, which is going to be Pyron wallet, except this time we're going to do start daemon and press enter. At this point, it will go through. It'll be running and say wallet is synced and ready for queries and we'll do control A D. Now you can create a service for the wallet daemon. If you do like just copy the daemon for the node that we had previously and go ahead and change the executable to the Pyron wallet and then space that start dash start dash daemon. There we go and utilize that and you can create a service and go through that process again i don't like keeping my wallet running all the time personally i only turn it on and connect it when i want to make transactions and i would suggest that you go that route too so having it on startup is not something i would suggest now that we've started the daemon we can create and get our new address so we're going to do pyron wallet new dash address and press enter and it will give us our address we're going to highlight it to copy it and put it into this notepad as well so we have all of the information for that wallet that we have and we can just do a file save as and we'll just do pyron and save and if we need to recover we can recover later to another node and that is how we can basically do it so this will be the address that you mine to and the address that you utilize in, essentially for everything within the wallet. A couple of useful commands is going to be the Pyron wallet balance, which will show you the balance of your wallet. Of course, this one is brand new, so it won't have anything in there. We can also do Pyron wallet and show addresses to see all of our addresses in case we forgot it so oh i forgot well log into my node go ahead and run it and then we can copy the address out again and if you are trying to send it it will be pyron wallet and it will be dash v the amount that you want to send and then dash t and then the address that you want to send it to so it would look something like that with that address there obviously not sending to ourself though and then however much you want to send you can also just do an all command if you want to send all of it that is a possibility as well so 
there are the relevant commands there. Now, there is one more that a lot of people ask me about. Let's say that you are you lost your node, you have your key and you want to recover it. In that case, you can do Pyron wallet and then you will do create. But at the end, you're going to add a change to that, which will be dash dash import. And then when you press enter, it'll essentially ask you for the new mnemonic phrase here. You will paste that in, press enter, create a wallet password, and it will import the old wallet. And that's how you can basically recover your wallet in the case that you lose it. So there's how to create a Pyron node and a wallet. This works on pretty much all Caspa basically forks at this point. So you, you could technically do this with anything like Carlson hash, Kasparov, or of course do it with Caspa in and of itself. Just change, of course, the commands to whatever the executables for that particular project is going to be and you'll be off to the races. In the next video, we're going to talk about solo mining Pyron to your own node and creating a stratum bridge so that all miners function and work with it. So if you're interested in that, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you're notified when that video hits my channel. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like, comment, subscribe down below and don't forget to check out my crypto mining e-course at sonofatech.com and become a supporter over at sonofatech.locals.com for early access to my tutorials guides and speculative mines i will see you next tuesday